Hey, good morning, friends. It's Carl. Welcome to the bathroom. Sunday morning it means it's time for the silky smooth Sunday shave. Hope everybody had a great week. No videos last week. <laughs> it was a weird week. Anyway, let's get to the shave and then we'll just talk because that's what I do. Soap, same soap. <clears throat> PAA, Pineapple Bay Rum, Colonel Conk Concoction. Brush, Omega Bore, 10,098. Shaver. Feather uh, Artist Club, gift to me by Trevor, who is still MIA. Buddy, I don't know if you're still watching or what's going on, but I hope hope you're okay. Um, <clears throat> Post, Nigga Shave, Figaro Gold. All right, let's get going. Um, I just wet the top of the soap. Don't really need to, but I have. <coughs> I don't know why. I just started doing it this past week. Maybe in a hope to make this stuff go away faster. I don't know. I mean, I'm really trying not to cheat and overload the brush just to use it up. But at this rate, I think this, uh, you know, puck, which is pretty much new, had a handful of shaves, and then the sample, the two ounces, the two ounce sample of the PAA uh, soap. So, probably close to six ounces of soap in there, give or take. Um, it's going to last me the year, I think. So I either need to shave more or, or overload the brush more. I'm not sure. It's a pretty decent load. It's pretty thick. Oh, yeah, we're going to have to add a lot of water to that. So anyway, yeah, it's been a weird week. Um... I didn't produce a single video this week, and that's okay. Just life got in the way, and that's the way it goes. Didn't watch too much either, so I'm way far behind. I think I may have watched part of Flash Boredom's recent face shave. And then I watched... Uh, I watched Johnny's review of the, uh, uh, what is it? I don't remember the name of the razor. That cartridge razor with the wide blade gap that he mysteriously alluded to that he had shaved some part of his body other than his face. So, uh, thus leaving my imagination to wander and giving me nightmares. Anyway. And then uh, his uh, shave with his new uh, gem, Open Comb. I don't remember exactly which model it was, but he seemed very pleased with both of them. Just like I'm very pleased with this lather. It's probably a little thick, but that's okay. You guys don't want to watch me lather for 10 minutes. <sighs> anyway, let's see. What else has been going on? Like I said working. I've just been, past week, totally unmotivated, unmotivated to do anything. Didn't go for any walks. Didn't do any workouts. Didn't make any videos. It was a pretty lazy week. I don't know what got into me. Anyway, it's passed. <laughs> Spent all day yesterday, you know, doing my typical Saturday. Uh, third, third shave on this blade, three, four days of growth, I don't remember. But uh, pretty typical Saturday stuff. Um, meal prep, laundry. Grocery shopping, cleaning.
<laughs> a little bit of a weird feeling today. I don't know if I've mentioned it to you guys. You guys know I go to church. The church going fella. And I know I've mentioned before that I go to a pretty traditional or fundamental, if you will, Baptist church here in Austin. Very small. Um, less than 20 members. And it has shrunk down to that over the past year. It wasn't very big when I joined. I mean, we, uh, maybe 25 or 30. But I don't even think we had 30 when I joined a year and a half ago. But anyway, um, so over the past year, year and a half, we've shrunk down to 15 to 20. Something like that. And, uh, through much prayer and consternation, the pastor has decided to shutter the church building. Move to a different part of the city, but 10 or 15 minutes up the road. And uh, basically just do a restart with the existing 15, 20 members. New church, new name, sell the building. see if we can flourish. He feels <clears throat> led that way. He thinks we can flourish further up north. This, so, today is the last day, or the last Sunday. Actually, I think it's going to be the last meetings altogether at our current church building, which is kind of sad. It's going to be the last day of us meeting together as Hallmark Baptist Church. And we will now move forward and uh, become the Open Door Baptist Church. So it's a little sad that church as, as Hallmark was Been serving the Austin community for 34 years, I think, somewhere around there, 32, 34 years. Um, not pretty, you know, I don't have a ton of ties to it because I've only been there for a year. I never knew any of the uh, previous pastors. Um, we've only got one family who's been there for a really long time. And they've been there for 15 years. So, needless to say, it's a bigger adjustment for them. But I think everybody else has been there for five years or less. But either way, it's a sad day. Um, Shutter in a church because of lack of interest. I mean, the area that that church is in is probably at one time was a good a good spot, but now it's kind of 
tucked back off of the roadway. And I'm not saying that that's the reason that the church went belly up by any means. But you really had to be looking for it to find it. Um, traditional churches aren't <laughs> very popular. Um, you know, because we don't... Uh, we do hymns and, and uh, King James Bible and stuff like that. And that kind of stuff isn't super popular these days. But, uh, I don't know. Like I said, it's not something that happened quickly. It's not something that was taken lightly. But it is what it is. I'm along for the ride until, until I hear otherwise. So... I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about the new church and how it's going to go, but I think we're moving in the right direction because we've seen some, <clears throat> once we took that step of faith, and stopped him hawing about it, some doors started opening. Um, we initially were going to have church services at the pastor's house. Then we found a, uh, a local business that was willing to let us use their building on Sunday for $50 a month, which is super cheap. We would have access to the building all Saturday night through the end of Sunday. So we could do Sunday morning and Sunday evening services there. Then about a week or so later, the guy who owns the building, out of the blue, calls the pastor and says, hey, he's also a, uh, a Christian fella, calls the pastor and says, hey, I've been praying about it. He says, I, I feel impressed to let you guys rent the building for as long as you need on Sunday evenings for free. So, um, you know, that, that was a real blessing because we're small <laughs> and uh, we don't have a ton of money and we're starting from scratch. So, you know, someone to give us free, free rental. is definitely a blessing, so. So over the past few weeks, we've been working some of the logistics and stuff like that out. We still haven't figured out about moving chairs and setting up. And I'm the... I'm the, the sound guy at the church, since I have a little bit of experience, uh, you know, because I was in a band in high school, and I know a little bit about soundboards and mixing and stuff like that. And because I have YouTube experience, I post the messages online in the audio format with just picture backgrounds, but... Um, a little thin there. So, uh, <laughs> I have been trying to figure out how to do a small portable soundboard setup so that we can continue recording the messages. <clears throat> More so, you know, one for our members who want to listen again or anybody else who wants to listen. If we put them, you know, we'll put them on YouTube. Or more so just so that there's a record of what was preached. That way nobody can come back and say, well, he said X, Y, and Z. So, and I got it figured out. I was, uh, you know, did my research. And nowadays, man, because podcasting and home recording and all that stuff is so much more 
accessible. I bought a little two channel tabletop mixer for under a hundred bucks. And it will uh, connect to the computer, connect to the ex existing microphone system that we have, and we're good to go. So I've been messing with that. Some of you guys saw me do post a couple audio tests yesterday. That's what I was doing. I was testing microphones and testing that soundboard, trying to figure out how to adjust the levels and stuff. So, so I've been working with that this week. It's one of the things that took some of my time. Of course, work. And then we've been, you know, packing, consolidating, cleaning a building that <laughs> has stood and for 34 years and done business, if you will. So we've been going through all of the old paperwork and the records and the this and the that. And it's just been a weird, like I said, a weird week. And you guys probably don't want to hear about this, but it's what, it's what happened in my life this week. So it's what I'm talking about. Anyway, so if you're uh, of the praying sort, please pray for our little our little church and its new endeavor. I do believe that this is the right thing to do. Um, and all that being said. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I've been. I've been here before with the church that lost members. Lost. Uh, had got rid of its building, its brick and mortar building. Rented a uh, a cafeteria space in a school on the weekends. Did the whole church in a box trailer set up, take down every week. And uh, it's hard. It's hard to grow a church. It's hard to come back from uh, from that. I think that's one of the at least one of the reasons why we're instead of trying to rebuild Hallmark, we're starting from scratch. Um, so anyway. And unfortunately, that church that I've done this before with, or had a little experience with this, is no more because it just became too taxing, too stressful for the pastor. He, was, he wasn't a full-time pastor, he was a part-time pastor. Um, so that made it even harder because he worked a regular, a regular job. He was a professional house painter. So he worked a physically demanding job and then tear up and sat down and just took its toll and he decided to shut the church down altogether after I think they did the church in the box for about a year or so and then that was it so it's my experience with it is scary and I'm not saying you know But I'm just going to trust what God has to do and let him do his thing. I'm going to do my thing. Try and be faithful to what he tells me I need to be doing and where I need to be serving. So, like I said, until I hear otherwise, I'm sticking with sticking with Hallmark or open door as it is now. Anyway, <laughs> on to the head shave. That was a beautiful shave with the uh, feather. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. On to the head shave. Anyway, so what else? That's it, man. I got that little soundboard. Shoot, it's so small and portable. I may even, or have been considering, since I got to tear it down and set it back up every week anyway, I'm doing a little podcast action or video podcast. I don't know what I would talk about. Because my life is boring and I pretty much talk about what I need to talk about during these shaving videos. And I don't know if anybody would listen or watch. But I think it would be kind of neat to do something a little bit different, a little different content. 
maybe do some <coughs> interviews or oh, interviews. What, who am I, Joe Rogan? No, I don't know. I've got the gear, so it might be something worth playing with. Even just to sit down and chat, man, hang out. You know, do like a just a Google hangout with some of the guys. Some of the shavers, we could just BS about anything. Because, you know, live shaves are fun. I like doing live shaves, even though I don't do a lot of them. But it's just kind of hard to read the comments and shave and stuff. But, so, that way, I, you know, that's why I think, like, maybe a Google Hangout or something. Not shaving. But, you know, just chatting. Might be kind of interesting. I don't know. I think... Somebody used to do it. I don't know if they still do. I think uh, PAA used to do like a podcast outside the den or something like that, where he would, Will Smythe would interview wet shavers. Because I know I remember that's where, uh, or I saw one episode where he talked with Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Gear about Chevettes and you know he would talk with Mantic and he had a couple of regular contributors um, Mantic 59 and I think maybe CB Christopher David Bailey was on there I don't know it's been a while and I don't even know if he still does it no outside the den wasn't the thing outside the den is what the Red Island Shaver does when he talks about shaving stuff that he's about to use or review. So, disregard that outside the den. What the heck was it called? I don't remember. Anyway, you, you some of you old heads would know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I thought about... Maybe doing like a weight loss podcast or something. Talk, you know, do a little feature talk with people who've had successful weight loss journeys to learn and encourage each other. Speaking of, I'm fat. Oh, so fat this week. Ate like garbage. I loved going to the range with my nephews and my brother last week, but it put me so behind. I didn't have any food prepped. My apartment was a mess. I barely had uniforms for work. Because that Sunday, man, it was miserable hot. Or that Saturday. We went to the range. We shot. We had a good time. We had lunch. It was fantastic. And then I came home and I was, you know, dehydrated from the heat and just sweating. Because, you know, while everybody else was kind of shooting and having a good time, especially the young boys, the 16, 15-year-old nephews, I was busy running around like a crazy man, making sure they didn't shoot each other or shoot themselves or anybody else. You know, doing safety, answering questions. So I didn't re really get a chance to shoot, which isn't a big deal, because it was more about taking them out and letting them, you know learn how to shoot and gun safety <laughs> but I was beat man and then I had to come home and you know I would tell you how many guns I took but I don't want you guys to think I'm a weirdo I do live in Texas so it was more than five we'll just say that but you know all, all different pistol calibers all different rifle a couple of different rifle calibers and a shotgun and we shot plenty Plenty, plenty of rounds. It was a good time. But like I said, then I had to come home and clean all that stuff. And that took me several hours. So, yeah, last weekend I never got around to making meal preps. So, I ate garbage all week. I, uh... Didn't exercise. So, 
and I ate a lot of salty food. Ooh, little stings there. Um, so, <laughs> I think I started the week at about 2.45, which is kind of where I've been sitting lately, which isn't great. You know, I'm up from, like I said, up from 2.29, 2.30 to 2.45, which, yeah. But then I stepped on the scale this morning after a week of uh, fast food and overindulgence and laziness. And I know it's all salt, so don't be shocked. 259. God. I was not happy to see that. So uh, I made sure I got my meals prepped yesterday. I got a workout schedule in my head. I need to put it on paper for to make with the executing of it. But anyway, that's the shave, guys. I'm going to do the post. Eh, I'll just knock the post out right quick. Beautiful shave. As always, silky smooth head, cheeks, mustache. The neck is the neck. It's always going to be the neck. It's never super smooth, even with a DE. So, a little of this fantastic uh, Figaro gold. A little bit more. Oh, yeah, that stuff. I love that stuff. I, mean, I need to use that more. <laughs> and I'll do the lotion off camera. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys and gals, for watching. Hope you have a great week. Hope your weekend was good. Fourth of July is right around the corner, so all of my American compatriots, Marka, happy birthday. Um, <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for spending a little time with me. Sorry I missed you last week. I was a lazy slacker. Um, but... <laughs> Hey, have a great Sunday, no matter what you do. Go spend some time with your friends and family because it's really important. We'll see you uh, next time, whenever that is. Have a good day. God bless.